This video will show you how effective a tilt Urim fire rifle is loaded with Winchester subsonic ammunition for rapid control. The rifle I'm using in this video is a CZ 452 16 inch barrel silhouette model combined with a Hawk scope and a SAC sound moderator. The rabbit control has been carried out on a private estate in the northeast of England. The estate is heavily infested with rabbits, causing damage to land by burrowing holes and eating grass that farm stock graze on, causing financial loss to farmers. It has been estimated that nine rabbits can eat as much grass as one sheep, so they have a dramatic impact to grazing land. Damage caused by rabbits in the UK is estimated at about £100 million a year. In the United Kingdom, a rabbit population is around about 40 million, and it grows about 1% each year. Rabbits breed all the year round, but the main time of breeding activity is early spring till the end of summer. Usually four to ten young are born in a litter, but a litter of 24 has been recorded. They are at breeding age from about three to four months. One breeding pair of rabbits can multiply from 90 to 100 rabbits throughout the year in ideal conditions. I'm shooting these rabbits from a vehicle while driving the fields. The rabbits are a little spooky and jumpy on this estate, so I have to shoot them from about 60 to 100 yards away. Headshot rabbits do kick around after they've been shot, but all the movement after the bullet impact is the nervous system shutting down. They are dead immediately. You need to get used to the nerves after death. Headshot rabbits leap in the air, dive in circles, lay on their backs with their legs kicking, and sometimes just drop down dead without moving. This action is not just confined to rabbits, all animals will twitch when a bullet hits the brain. Lost count of how many times I've seen it, but it's still unpleasant to watch. Shooters and viewers must realise this is a reflex action only. Two Urim fire rifles for some reason are underestimated for their power and the bullet travel. This is a mistake to underestimate the round, because if weather conditions are right and they fire at the optimal angle upwards, it can travel 1.5 mile. Ricochets can be common, so it's very important to know what is behind the target. When shooting rabbits with a 2-2 you must always put safety first. Use suitable backdrops, take wind direction and speed into account, and if you are in doubt, do not take the shot, and remember, unlike a paper target, they do not sit still all the time. Doing rabbit control can be quite frustrating, because rabbits that have to be controlled by request of landowners or farmers have normally been pursued or plinked on at by hobby rabbit catchers, or someone that owns an air rifle. This makes the job harder as the rabbits become spooky and they become educated, so they run off at the slightest noise or presence of vehicles or people. That's why my policy is I'm the only person doing the job. This is because of the obvious safety reasons and so that nothing is disturbed unnecessarily and the job can be carried out efficiently with maximum impact. I also reserve the right to decline any work where hobby rabbit catchers or less professional people may attend.
When you're out shooting with a 2 2, only take shots at quarry you know you can kill it instantly and humanely. And only take shots that are within your confidence level. You should not take shots just to see if you can hit the quarry. You should be confident that you can hit your target accurately and at the range that you are shooting. Some of these clips have been slowed down to show the impact of Winchester ammunition. On impact the bullet expands in mushrooms causing instant death. When you're shooting rabbits with a 2-2 it's important that the rabbits are headshot so that they can either be sold to the game dealer who will sell them for human consumption or you can process them into pet food. I'll show you that in this video. Even when the rabbits are to be turned back into pet food you don't want any body shot rabbits. This will severely bruise the rabbit meat, cause bone splinters and possibly contaminate the meat with bodily waste.
These two tools are definitely a good bag filler if you're lucky enough to obtain permission on a farm that has not been shot before or has a big population of rabbits you can get hundreds of rabbits per visit. If you're the only person shooting the rabbits on the land, it's a good idea to shoot the rabbits twice in one week at first. Then let the place have a rest for a couple of weeks, so that it don't become spooky or jumpy. You will shoot a lot more rabbits this way and have a greater impact by doing this. If you plan on shooting regular to make money from the game, you'll need a lot of different land so you can move around and rotate, let places settle. Some rabbits on part of this estate are starting to become infected with myxomatosis. This virus was apparently introduced into Britain around 1953 and had devastating effects to the rabbit population. It's transmitted by the rabbit flea. At first the virus was welcomed by landowners and farmers because they thought it would be the mass extermination of one of Britain's biggest pests. Later in the 50s the pest act criminalised the intentional spread of the virus. It is still devastating effects to this day but some rabbits have built up immunity so they can recover from it. Personally I kill any rabbit showing signs of myxomatosis to reduce the spread of this virus and avoid unnecessary suffering of rabbits. Some might say why don't you use a 17HMR? Personally given the choice I choose a 2 to rim fire if you're going to be shooting rabbits in any numbers. Yes the HMR is a flatter shooting round but it's louder, it's up to 4 times more expensive to use than a 2 to. This is just my opinion, I'm not a big fan of them. I'm mainly shooting out of a vehicle, daytime and lantern. If I drove around shooting a 17 HMR, I'd have a big bill at the end of it. In some places the rabbits are very spooky and jumpy, so any loud cracks like what comes off the 17 HMR would simply clear the fields on a night time. My 22CZ has shot piles and piles of rabbits, it's quiet and cheap to run. I send most of my rabbits to the game dealers and rabbits that I don't send to the game dealers gets processed into pet food. Some game dealers won't entertain 1-7 shot rabbits, they say they're too messy, they don't even like headshot ones, they say people complain about the splinters and bullet fragments in the meat, so I won't bother with that round for now. I fired the 1-7, it's a great rifle if you're not selling the meat. The 1-7 can be good fun though, and good for long range shooting if you're not in the game to make money. If you're shooting for fun it's fine, but for the professional rabbit catcher it has no place in my opinion, but then again I'll shoot rabbits in the head at 100 yards plus with a 2-2. So why do I need to spend money on a light around that travels that little bit flatter? I don't think I do. I was offered to promote a 0.17 HMR in the making of this video and I declined as it will not do the same job as a 2-2 and my aim was to show how to shoot rabbits that can be reused for human food or turn into pet food, not a round that will destroy the meat. My personal view of the 1.7 HMR is, it's expensive to feed, it's louder, the damage to quarry is greater. For me the 2 has to be the workhorse for the bigger bags, silent, cheap to run and a lot less mess.
If you're controlling rabbits by driving the fields and shooting them, you must remember that you're there because of the damage to the crops or the grass that the rabbits are doing. So you must not cause more damage than the rabbits by driving the fields in wet conditions. If the fields are wet and boggy, don't drive them. Because if you get stuck and start wheel spinning, you're making more mess than what the rabbits will ever do. When you're working on estates or places that you've got permission, you should always abide by the terms of your permission, by only shooting quarry that you've been told to. If you're there to control rabbits, simply ignore all other species. 
If you're daft enough to shoot stuff that you're not supposed to and get seen or found out, you will lose your permission immediately. When word gets round that you're not trustworthy, you will lose permission elsewhere as well. Using a 2-2 with a sound moderator is quite quiet. It doesn't alarm stock as you can see in this clip or draw any unnecessary attention to you while they were doing the job. I use hawk scopes with 50mm optics. I find them great for light gathering and accuracy. I have the scope set of about 8 times magnification so it gives a clear view of the rabbit's head and all its surroundings. Once the cross is on it, it's as good as in the bag. Hawk scopes have an assortment of reticles. They do mill dot, 30 30, and my favourite map 6 or 8. This means you can zero the scope and use the map markers on the reticle to accurately hit your target at various distances. They also have some great software on their site, you can download it for free. It's Ballistics Reticle Calculator that shows you exactly how your scope will perform and how to set it up. That's direct from the Hawk site at hawkoptics.com. If you're looking for shooting permission it can be a tedious task going around farms knocking on doors and asking, but it must be done. I suggest going to farms by yourself, it's less intimidating. Have some cards made up with your name, address and contact details on it. Landowners and farmers and gamekeepers need to trust you, so give them as much information about yourself as you can, but also keep the conversation polite and very brief. They just simply won't have the time to stand and talk to you for hours. I also carry a pre-typed permission form with me that requires an address and a signature to complete the form. The form shows all my personal details and all my public liability insurance details. I think everyone doing field sports should have some form of insurance just in case anything goes wrong.
There's loads of different places to obtain insurance from. If you're doing this for leisure purposes, the cover is much the same. The main thing that differs is the price, the yearly premium. I suggest that you look on the internet and read all the policy details before you commit yourself to one. Most offer a good deal for public liability insurance, normally between 5 and 10 million pounds is what they do. But when choosing one, have a read on what they will and will not pay out on. In places where the rabbits have been left alone for a while, undisturbed, they feel more confident. This makes the control of them a lot easier, because they sit nice making it possible to shoot multiple rabbits from one position. Unlike other places where one shot nearly empties the field. Another thing to take into account is the disturbance of game birds. If you're controlling rabbits on a shooting estate, avoid disturbing nesting birds, poles, coveys of partridges, etc. Remember it's not a good idea upsetting game management, and by disturbing game you will only annoy the gamekeepers and possibly lose your permission.
This estate also has a problem with geese affecting grazing fields. It's not just what they eat, it's the damage they do by paddling the fields into mud. I take care of these geese when the season begins in September, but this time of year they are out of season and they must be left alone. A quicker and cleaner way to gut rabbits is like this. Simply grip the rabbit as near to the front legs as you can and begin to force the guts towards the rear of the rabbit. Once the guts are below the cavity of the stomach and under pressure, a final push will force the guts out all in one go. This is a great way for summer rabbit control to reduce the risk of flies laying eggs inside the rabbits and contaminating the meat as there's no cuts made with a knife. Here's a few I will do to show you in more detail. Some large rabbits can be a bit harder to push the guts out, so sometimes I push them across my leg to get more force and make the job easier. I also cut the heads and legs off in the field to simplify the skinning process once I get home. Once I get back home I skin the rabbits as quick as possible. The method I use is to nick the skin with a knife through the middle of the back and pull the skin apart so it comes off in two bits. You have to remove the bladder and the lower gut tube containing the droppings. 
I break and twist the tail and pull all the waste out all in one action. Some cut between the rear legs and remove the waste pipe and bladder that way. Like I'll show you in the first rabbit in this clip. Once the rabbits are skinned and cleaned, I can process it into pet food. This is an old Hobart mince I bought and had repaired, so it's been used for this job. These minces were not designed to mince bones, so I make the work as easy as I can for the machine by chopping the rabbits into smaller bits, more manageable pieces, and using a large chopping plate on the front of the mincer for the first time I put the meat through.
Once I rough mince all the rabbits, I change the front plate and use one with smaller holes to produce mince with no signs of bones at all. All the rough minced rabbit is put back through the mincer for a second time, producing good pet mince that looks like this. This is an ideal way to prepare rabbits for pet food, and every rabbit caught, even the small ones, never goes to waste. Once all the rabbit meat has been minced, I weigh it into approximately one pound bags. I flatten and shape the mince in the bag so it stacks nice and stores conveniently in a freezer. When you've finished, the bag mince looks like this, ready to freeze. When I use this for my dogs, I quickly bring it to boil. I don't feed this raw. These hawk scopes are a great scope for a 2 2 subsonic rifle. Hawk optics are designed by world class engineers and built using high quality materials which is why they offer the Hawk 10 year warranty. I have tried most subsonic ammunition available but in my opinion Winchester subsonics are drones used for rabbit control. They are accurate and have a great deal of stopping power. Here is a round that has been fired. As you can see the mushroom perfect on impact. That's why they have great stopping power.
That concludes this video. I hope you've picked up some tips by watching it. I will have an assortment of other field sport videos out soon, which will be available direct from my site www.sh-pc.co.uk in the DVD sales section.